What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and welcome to this quick guide on setting up your own CrewLink server for Among Us. Basically, CrewLink is proximity chat for Among Us. You walk next to someone, you can hear them speaking, and they can hear you speaking. If you'd like to see how to set this up and play with it using public servers, check the description down below for a video on that. This video here is going to focus on creating your own server, and we're going to get pretty nerdy. So if you want to play, click the link in the description down below. If you want to host your own server to play with other people with a more reliable server, this is the video you're looking for. The public voice chat servers could of course go down, could get DDoS attacked, or could just be overcrowded. Too many people are using them, so they don't work properly. If you create your own private server, it'll be a lot more private for you if you're one searching for privacy. Let's just get right into it. Simply head across to the next link in the description down below, which is Automated's Crew Link Server. Note that this page is different to the actual Crew Link page where you download the plugin for the game here. This Automated Crew Link Server page doesn't have a download under releases as it installs a little bit differently. There's two ways of doing this. One way is through Docker, which is basically a virtualized program that you simply download, run, and it works perfectly off the bat with no extra steps. The second way of doing it is using node.js, but I'm pretty sure the Docker method will be a lot more reliable on different platforms, as that's the entire point of using a Docker container. Don't worry, if you've never used Docker before, we're gonna be going through some really basic things in this video. So when you reach this page over here, all you need to do is scroll down and find the Docker quick start section. This is the command that we're going to be running when we have Docker installed. If you don't have Docker installed, check the description down below for a link to Docker. That is this page over here. Simply click Docker Desktop for Windows, Linux, or Mac, and then click Download once again when you get to this page here. Then simply click Get Docker once again, and it'll download an installer. It's that simple. We can scroll down and download an edge release version, a beta version, if you'd like. But I'll be leaving it with just the stable version, which is the download button up here or down here. I'll simply click on it to open it up when it's done downloading. Then we get to this page over here. Simply make sure all of these are checked and then click OK. You, of course, may have more or fewer checkboxes there. I have WSL installed and enabled, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Basically, I can run Linux commands on Windows using that. If you'd like to know how to set that up, it'll also be linked in the description down below. But don't worry, if you don't have that checkbox, you can simply skip it. Now, all we have to do is wait for this to be installed. Then simply click close and log out, which will log you out of your Windows. Simply log back in to re-enable it. There we go. Opening up CrewLink server on GitHub once again, we'll find the command which will also be linked down in the description below. We'll simply hit start, type in CMD to open up a command prompt window. Inside of here, we'll be typing in Docker and hitting enter to see if it works. If you see something like this, congratulations, Docker is fully installed and working. We can type in Docker space PS to see running programs inside of Docker. As you can see, nothing's running right now. Let's go ahead and copy that command off of the GitHub page here. This one right here. It'll also be in the description down below. Pasting it in as such, Docker run hyphen D hyphen P followed by a port colon another port automated crew link server latest. I'll hit enter. And if you see something like this, it'll download a couple of necessary files and put them onto your PC. There we go. Now it's successfully installed and downloaded. And if you see a long code like this, it means it's running. All we have to do is type in Docker space PS and you'll see the crew link server is currently running over here. Because we added a hyphen D, it means that it's running in a disconnected state where it's not linked to this command prompt window over here, meaning that it will constantly run in the background after you type that command. Cool, now that the server's running, we're basically done here. I'll launch up CrewLink and clicking the settings button in the top left, we can scroll down and set our own voice server. I'll copy this public one and save it somewhere else just in case I want to go back to it in the future. Note that your own private server will only run while this Docker container is running. So inside of here, we can type 127.0.0.1 or simply local host colon 9736. If you've ever hosted a Minecraft server or something like that before, this is basically the same. We've typed in the address, which is our local computer here, localhost 9736. If I simply minimize this, click open game, click online, create a public game, you'll see that now we're talking over here and it's working as expected. Cool, now we're connected to our own local server on our own local computer. What do we do if we want other people to join? Well, this is where things get a little bit confusing. If you've ever hosted a Minecraft server before, as I mentioned, you'll know exactly what to do. What we need to do is A, allow this program and port through our Windows firewall, antivirus firewall, or whatever firewall software you have. 
Then the second thing is port forwarding, which means allowing people outside of your local network to connect to your PC. We'll be port forwarding 9736, which is where the application is running. Hypothetically, if 9736 is already being used by another server, or for some reason you'd like something else, you can edit the run command from docker run dp9736 colon 9736 to something else. Let's say 25565 which as far as I know is the Minecraft server port. Some 25565 requests from the outside internet coming to my PC will be sent to 9736 in this program, meaning people can connect and play as usual. This program only works on port 9736 as far as I know, but we can redirect other ports to come into it. If that sounds confusing, don't worry. The first part of this over here is the outside port and this is the inside port. Leave the inside one the same always, and you can change this outside one to be whatever you want. I'll leave it as 9736, as that's the default. That is the port that I'll be allowing through my Windows firewall, antivirus firewall, and I'll port forward to my own computer. While I do have another port forwarding guide linked in the description down below, that's only if you find this video confusing. That goes into a lot more detail than this does. First of all, I'll allow it through my Windows firewall. I'll hit start, type in firewall, and open up Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. Inside of here, I'll go to Inbound Rules, New Rule, and I'll click Port. Next, I'll choose TCP, and under specific local ports, I'll enter 9736. I'll copy this as we'll be typing it in once again. Next, Allow, Next, all of these three checked, Next, and I'll type in a name, say Crew Link Server. Finish, and we're done with the inbound. Click Outbound on the far left, and then click New Rule. Inside of here, we'll click port. Next, we'll check TCP and enter 9736 once again. Next, allow. Next, all three of these checked. Next, and I'll type in the name again, crew link server. Of course, you can name it whatever you want and click finish. Now we've allowed the port 9736 through our Windows firewall. Do the same for an antivirus firewall or other firewall software if you have it installed and we'll get onto port forwarding to your PC. Now, because all routers are very different, I made a generalized example on this web page over here. Note that this doesn't actually do anything. If you go to it, this is purely an example. You'll need to log into your own router and port forward the external port, i.e. the number people add on the outside to your internal port, i.e. the one on the inside. This is basically the same as this code that we looked at earlier. 9736 on the outside gets sent to 9736 on the inside. Same here, external gets sent to the internal. So if you have two entry boxes like this, or just one, enter 9736 to 9736 if you have the ability to enter a range, otherwise just enter one of these. Internal port, the same. Then protocol should be TCP and your local IP should be the IP address of your local computer. If you don't know this, press start and then type in CMD. Hit enter to open up a command prompt window and then type in IP config. Hit enter and look for the way that you're connected to the internet. For me, it's this ethernet adapter over here. IPv4 address 192.168.1.20. I can close out of it and enter that under the local IP here. Then all we have to do is click add, save or anything like that and it'll be added to the list. Anyone on the outside who tries to connect to my IP 9736 will get sent to the inside 9736 and sent to my local computer specifically using the TCP protocol. Cool, now we've successfully port forwarded and people on the outside internet should be able to connect to our server by simply entering our public IP address followed by colon 9736. If you have multiple routers or switches, etc., between you and the actual way that you connect to the internet, your fiber router box or anything like that, you'll need to port forward at each step along the way. So on your fiber router box, you'd port forward whatever port to the inside computer or device next in the chain, which could be either a wireless switch or anything like that, or simply directly to your PC. And you do that at every step along the way until you get to your computer. Now that we've port forwarded, allowed it through our firewall, and the server is running, again, we can check with Docker PS. We can simply get our friends to start up the game and join the server using our external IP address. I'll demonstrate that to you now. So all the friend has to do is open up the Crewlink app and then hit settings in the top left. Scroll down and the voice server will be your external IP colon 9736. To find this, simply open up a web browser, then search for what is my IP. You'll see an IP address returned over here 
If you don't, you can click what is my IP, IP location, or anything like that, and copy your IP address from one of those pages. Then all your friends will do is enter said IP address, to say 12345678 colon 9736 as such, where this number in the beginning is your external IP address that you gave to them. Then all I have to do is close it, and open up the game, join the server, and things will work properly. However, because my laptop's on the same local network connection as my PC, the same router, I'll enter the local IP address here that we port forwarded to. So, 192.168.1.20. Simply closing this, let's simply open up the game and join the same server. So, join code JYUOBF. JYUOBF, join. Now that we've joined the same server, looking over at my Crewlink app, you can see me talking here. As soon as I speak, both my laptop and my main computer light up as such. Things are working as expected. We are now successfully hosting a crewling server off of our local computer. Now that we've done this, how exactly do we stop the server running? All we have to do is type in docker stop followed by the ID of the container. Typing in docker ps will simply select the ID here, right click to copy it, and then hit control V to paste it or right click once again. Hitting enter, it'll go ahead and stop the crewlink server from running. There we go. Typing in docker ps once again, you can see nothing is running and we successfully closed the crewlink server. Awesome. Now that we've successfully created a server, started it and stopped it, how do we automate this process because typing commands isn't all of that fun? Well, we'll simply create a batch file, which is an executable script file. Right click anywhere, like on your desktop, new text document, and then rename it removing.txt at the end and call it something like crewlink server. Then in place of .text, we'll be entering .bat, .bat. Hit enter and then click yes when prompted if you'd like to change the file extension. Right click the batch file, click edit, and inside of here we'll be typing some commands. First of all, we'll be entering the start command for the server, which was this. Again, you can change the external port. Because this is simply launching up with a random name, we can't exactly find the name and close it with it. So we have to assign it a specific name. Right before this last section over here, I'll simply enter hyphen hyphen name space followed by a friendly name for this. I'll call it say crewlink. Hitting space again, we're done with the start command. When we run this, it'll start a new Docker container with the name crewlink. Note that this name has to be unique for each different Docker container. That's not necessarily important unless you want to run more than one server. This first line will simply start it. I'll hit enter to go to a new line and I'll type in pause. This pause command over here is simple. All it does is says press any key to continue and upon doing that, it'll continue the script. So once this first command is run, it'll ask us to hit any key to continue and then it'll run whatever commands we put below it. The next command I'll be putting in here is docker stop followed by the name of the server, crewlink. So what exactly does this file do? Number one, it starts up the server with the name crewlink. Then it pauses, waiting for you to press a key on your keyboard inside of this window. Then when you do press a key, it simply stops the server as such. You can of course skip these last two lines here and run docker stop crewlink yourself inside of a new command prompt window, but I'll be leaving it as this. So let's quickly test it. After saving this .bat file, I'll simply double click on it to run it. As you can see, the docker server started up and here's its unique identifier. We also paused and it's asking us to press any key to continue. I won't be doing this. Instead, I'll be opening up a new command prompt window and inside of here, I'll be typing in docker ps to check running docker programs. Here is our crewlink server and as you can see, names crewlink. Cool. So heading back to our script, I'll simply hit any key on my keyboard and you can see it's running docker stop crewlink. It is now closing the server. The window vanishes and the server is completely closed. Checking our command prompt window once again, docker ps. You can see no Docker container is running. We successfully closed the server. So of course this video was more than just a crewlink server setup video. It is also a little introduction to Docker. I have personally never used it myself properly before. This is one of my first few times running it properly and it worked pretty well. With all of that aside, if you prefer not to use Docker, we can of course run it through Node. Heading back to the GitHub server page, as you see, manual installation, all we need is node.js. This of course is a longer method, but it doesn't require you to have Docker installed, and I'm not too sure with changing the IP address. Simply opening up the node.js page, we will download and install node.js. After installing it, all we have to do is open up a new command prompt window, 
and type in npm install yarn hyphen g. Again, I'm gonna quickly run through this as this is the much less preferred method that you shouldn't really be using. So because I have Node already installed, I'll type in cmd and run the command npm install yarn hyphen g. Cool. Then next up, we'll be cloning the crewlink server GitHub as such. And then we'll be running cd crewlink server. Next up, we'll be running yarn install and then yarn start. And there we go. Now we're running the crewlink server. Now, while this may seem like a shorter way of doing this, I much prefer the Docker method as it's a lot easier to change things around. And of course, because it's a virtualized program, it'll run exactly the same on anyone's PC compared to this over here that could have many, many issues. While this may seem easier, there is quite a bit more to download and install this way. And I skipped the entire installation and setup of node.js. Trust me, the Docker method is a lot easier. It's just three commands after installing Docker. It just took me so long to explain it as we had to port forward, open the firewall, and I was giving you a quick crash course into Docker. Of course, from here, you'll have to open your firewall and port forward as well if you choose to use the Node.js method, which is the second one over here. Simply hitting Control C, Y, it closes the server as such. So that's about it. Hopefully you found this video somewhat interesting and hopefully educational. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.